Uh, give me a minute and I'll give you an update on the situation in Navdivka. And somebody had asked the other day, PD, on the map, what are those little red diamonds? And if you click on them, the red diamonds tell you what uh, grouping of the armed forces are in that location. So you can see I, I hit that one up there and it says the 110th separate motorized rifle brigade. So sometimes you'll hear me talk about the 76th VDV or the 110th separate motorized rifle brigade. And the way that I know who that is, is because the map tells me. And I have every reason to believe that the map is accurate um, certainly the guys who produce the map do everything they can to make sure that it's as accurate as it can be. Um, and so what we want to take a look at today is a couple of things. Why is it that the Russians are having such a hard time in Avdivka when they are hitting the town with what should be overwhelming force? And one of the main reasons is the superiority of the Ukrainian drones. That's a big deal. What the Russians are unable to do is move their electronic warfare equipment close enough to the front to be effective against the Ukrainian drones. And because the Ukrainians keep blowing up their EW equipment. And that shit's expensive. And there's only so much of it to go around. And the Russians... I mean, it's almost every day we hear about something being taken out. That's a real problem for the Russians. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians' electronic warfare equipment is uh, sitting in a protected location inside their defensive lines, and the Russians can't get near it. The Ukrainians keep using it to drop drones out of the sky. We have reports of Russians out in the field. Right Now, this is the best part. It's Ukrainian drone footage of Russian drone operators out in the fields around uh, Krasnoharivka trying to recover the drones that the Ukrainians have taken out of the sky with electronic warfare. It's amazing. Now, the fighting is all around the Stopove here and a little bit to the south, right on the corner there, where you see that push toward the chemical plant. The chemical plant, which is solidly defended by the Ukrainians at this time, and which represents the high ground. This is so important to understand. Everybody is talking about the Terracon and the loss of the Terracon and how the Russians now have the high ground and that should put them in a better position, but it doesn't. It's only the high ground if you're coming from the east the ground rises behind the Terracon and the chemical plant is on the higher ground, which is why the Russians haven't been able to make use of the slag heap the way that the Ukrainians did, because every Russian that goes up there is right in sight of machine gun fire or ATGM fire. It's worthless to them at this time, at this time. If they take the chemical plant, that all changes. The Russians have been pushing hard, trying to get to Stepove. So far, they have been rebuffed. There are Russian sources, you'll read Russian sources, that say the Russians have taken the town. But we have good current geolocated footage from the Ukrainians that makes it clear that that is not the case. Now, on the subject of drone superiority on the Ukrainian side, if you remember the last Avdivka update, that red arrow that I added there, that's the path roughly that the Russians take to get to the front line. And then these blue X's that I scribbled on here, those are all known Ukrainian drone strikes, uh, successful strikes against Russian equipment, men and machines. And you'll notice that a lot of them are on that road because the Ukrainians are using their edge in drone superiority to hit the Russians as they approach the contact line. That's one of the reasons why the casualties are so high here in Avdivka. The men are not even making it to the contact line before they're taken out. Then, of course, once they, they get to where the fighting is, 
They've got a 500 meter run across open fields that is all within machine gun range and ATGM range, uh, not to mention artillery range. Um, it's, it's, it's a bad situation. There's 8,000 men there just waiting one after another to go into this line of fire. And the last assault brigades that attacked Stepove, according to the Ukrainian MOD, were completely destroyed. No survivors. Now, somebody had asked in the live last night that, or said that they heard that uh, phosphorus, white phosphorus is being used in Avdivka. For that person and for anybody who's interested, these pictures are purportedly from Avdivka last night. White phosphorus rounds, these incendiary rounds are nasty, nasty things uh, that set the air on fire and not something you want coming down on you, that's for sure. On the other side of the coin, the Ukrainians have taken out their eighth Su-25 uh, fighter jet in Avdivka in what, the last three weeks? I think it's three weeks now. That's eight jets at about $35 million a piece in uh, three weeks. I, I mean, there's not going to be a Russian Navy or a Russian Air Force left by the time the Russians finally understand they cannot win in Ukraine. So that's the current update from Avdivka. Look, I don't want to give the impression that the Ukrainians are not suffering or that, the Ukra that this is a walk in the park for the Ukrainians. It's not. It's got to be hell. It's got to be hell on earth. And it's a nightmare. But the Ukrainians are not suffering the way the Russians are. Certainly not the losses. Um, there are lots of pictures on Telegram, guys, if you're interested in counting bodies in the field, which I am not. Um, but they're all out there for the world to see that this is what is happening in Avdivka. So despite the odds, the Ukrainians are holding in there. And unless the Russians bum rush Avdivka with all, you know, 32,000 of the troops that they have in reserve there, purportedly, uh, this is how it's going to keep going. The fighting, you'll notice, is all in the north where the Russians are advancing. It's all in Donetsk. It's all uh, in uh, Avdivka. It's all in uh, Kupiansk se sectors. Why is that? I think it's because the Russians are trying to draw Ukrainian troops away from Kherson. The Russians don't seem to have the men to put into Kherson, so they're doing everything they can to draw Ukrainians away. That's good for the Ukrainians. All right, thanks folks. Oh, this video is brought to you. Today's sponsor is my dear friend, Vanetta. Thank you, Vanetta, for all you do. You are the best.